Hi guys, I feel like I haven't talked to you in so long and I know I skipped some weeks, it was just impossible to publish a video on time. I had lots of stuff going on in February. First of all, we went to Curaçao, which is an island in the Caribbean for five days, which was amazing and was so much fun. Oh my God, so relaxing, the weather was perfect. Everything was perfect. So I took a lot of pictures there and my plan was to enjoy some alone time there to do some plein air painting. And turns out I did not really do plein air painting. Only this one day, I'm gonna insert some footage, but this one day I had pretty much the whole day alone. So I decided I would start early and I would do a hike. So I went to Christophel Park, which is a national park there. Curaçao is a pretty flat island. It's a really small island too. But there's this one big mountain, the Christophel Mountain, that is pretty steep. It's not a super long hike. I would say it takes two and a half hours up and down. So it's not that long. It's just that you have to start the hike before 10 a.m. because otherwise it gets too hot. So I started really early. I got there, I did the hike, drank lots of water, saw some amazing views, lots of cacti, it was so nice. And up top, you had the 360 view, it was very beautiful. My plan was that after the hike, I would go to a beach swim a little bit and I brought all my art materials so I wanted to do some plein air painting. But on the way there, I started having a headache so I thought maybe, you know, it was just too hot. I'm just gonna go like dip, in, dip myself in the water, it's gonna be good, cool down the body, it's gonna feel really good. And it did feel good, but not enough. My headache started getting worse and worse and then I, I wasn't feeling good at all. So I went back to the hotel and I think I either had a heat stroke or not enough sodium in my body because I drank so much water, but I didn't really eat a lot. So anyway, I was feeling very bad. So I slept this whole afternoon and I felt bad that day because I had only five days there and I slept for like an afternoon. So I thought, what a waste of time, but it was okay. I had a really exciting day the next day. We did the catamaran ride, so I really wanted to feel good. And I did, so I was able to enjoy the rest of the trip with no problems. But yeah, at the beach that day, I started a painting, but I didn't finish it. So I just did like a, the background of my painting, but I finished it at home. So I thought what I would do is I could show you what I painted there and what I painted at home because I did some painting based on the pictures that I took. So I did that a little bit and I want to do some more. So I thought maybe I could show you what I did there and at home and then I could paint something else. I almost forgot I did one full drawing there. It was another day where I had, I think, I had until 2 p.m. alone. So what I did is that I just went. So I walked around in the main city, which is called Willemstad. And you see the main buildings, you know, the Dutch buildings, like the tall and slim buildings next to the water. They have that there, but they're all colorful. So I walked around, I had lunch, and then I went on a, like a public place where there was some music, some tables, some shade. So I just stayed there for two hours, I think, and I just drew what I saw in front of me. It was really nice. I'm going to show you the drawing. So I did that. So one full drawing and one start of a drawing that I finished at home. Then at home, I did another painting, which is a landscape based on a picture that I took at a beach. 
And my goal was to be able to draw an abstract landscape, which is something that I've been trying to do, but it's so easy to get back into your old habits and drawing tight. It's a thing that I do. I get so caught up in what I'm doing and I forget the world and I just sometimes I think I could have stopped earlier or this is something I want to practice at least I don't know if I make any sense but I recently went to see some art in multiple art galleries in Montreal and I saw an artist there that did beautiful paintings and they kind of looked like they were unfinished but they were finished it's just a look and I thought that the restraint that this artist showed was very impressive. And it's something that I'm aiming towards as well, is to be able to stop when I feel like the painting is finished, not overwork it, and be able to stay loose. Especially in landscapes, I feel like it's easy to want to draw or paint all the little details that you see in a picture, but sometimes you don't have to. So my goal was to be able to paint an abstract landscape. So I think that's what I did. I'm pretty pleased with the results. So I'm going to show you everything. And I think we're losing the light now. I had to do a lot of like tax stuff this morning. So that's why I'm starting late in the studio today. But I have a couple of days ahead of me where I'll be able to paint and draw. So we'll have a short vlog, I think, just to get back into the rhythm of things. Yeah, I feel like I need to be slow and do some self-care because the past weeks have been very busy, but very rough at the same time, mentally, I think, especially with work. So I think I need to drink some coffee, stay in my pajamas for a whole day and just like go slow. So we'll go slow together today and in the next few days, we're still going to create some art and have fun. Okay, let me show you what I created. First, this is my travel sketchbook. So I did this one. This was the day after the hike where I wasn't feeling too good. So I think at the beach, I only did this blue water and a little bit of the sand. And that's pretty much it. After that, I just couldn't do it. So back home, I just added the, all the rest, in fact. So I did the sky. I used some new art materials for these, this tree. And yeah, I did some mixed media. So I used some watercolors, some new color too, some pencils, a bunch of stuff really. I really like the chairs. I love this style where it's like a child's drawing. I really like that. Like mixing something a bit more detailed like this and the background. This with like elements like this and this boat. <laughs> I find that funny. And I like the orange that I put in the water. In fact, here... I initially drew somebody here and I really didn't like it. So I used some watercolor pencils and just some regular pencil. So the watercolor pencil, I was able to remove it partly by putting some water on top. And then I put this chair here to camouflage <laughs> another area. But the orange was the pencil that I couldn't remove. So that's why I put some orange in the water. But I really like the effect. I think it's really nice. And I added some tiny people. So this was at the beach, Cas Abao. So this is my travel sketchbook. So far I have this from a camping spot in Vermont. This was from the top of a mountain in Vermont. This was from Squamish, British Columbia. This was in British Columbia too, but brandy wine. This was at my dad's place. And now we have Curacao. So that's it. That's what I did in this one. Now, in this one, I did, oh, I did this. So this is the scene that I drew when I told you that I was sitting. There was some shade, some trees, um, some umbrellas. So I sat there for about two hours and I did this scene that takes two pages 
And I like, I really like the lavender tree. This is something that I've been doing a little bit. And the pop of neon color here and there. The hardest thing to do was to draw people because they were moving so fast. So I feel like they're not well drawn at all. There's just like this lady who stood still for like 30 seconds. So I feel like this one is the best one that I drew, but I'm not, it's not the best. My favorite part is like this little pigeon here and this bird. But I like all the details I put in the trees too. All the texture and the shading and some areas that are not drawn in compared to other areas that are. So yeah, it was fun. It was very relaxing. Not too many people stopped and talked to me. A couple did, but not a lot. And then this is a drawing, well, a painting, well, sla painting slash drawing that I did back at home based on the picture that I took. So I did some mixed media too. I did, um, I did use some watercolor and some new color tubes. This was Casa Bautu, but like the other side. So on the side that way, you had the umbrellas and the beach. And there's always like these big rock formations around the beaches. I like how I was able to like do the, the this little wave. Waves are something that are very hard to draw for me. I don't have a lot of experience, so I think I did pretty good. And I like this simple style. So there's that. And then one last thing that I did is in this big sketchbook. I did this painting slash drawing using watercolors also, neo color tools, and I think I did use some watercolor pencils as well. And my goal was to be able to do an abstract landscape and I think I did good. It's pretty abstract. And I was able to stop, I think, at the right time. So here, these lines here are cactus, cacti that were growing in the like rock formation. So I like this purple shading. Here you see that you can guess that there's a bit of sand here and then there's the water that is very turquoise. So very pretty. I like it. So that's what I did. I want to ask you a question. Sometimes people give me art materials and I don't always know what they are or, well, I know what they are, but I don't know what the quality of them is. And it's important for me to know the quality because if the quality is not good, for example, if it's not light fast, then I'm only going to use these materials in my sketchbooks. So I don't mind if the quality is not good, but I need to know. If I want to create something that I intend on maybe selling, then I need to make sure that the materials are going to last through time. So there is... These ones, I think I solved the mystery. These are art... 101 I think that they are wax pastels but I'm pretty sure that these are quite old because they don't transfer too well on paper they feel plasticky like if you were to take a soft piece of plastic I don't know if it exists but just imagine it you have a soft piece of plastic in your hand and when you you rub it against the paper then some of it transfers on the paper, but it doesn't like, I'll show you what it does. I swatched them somewhere, but I feel like you're not getting a uniform spread on the paper. You're just getting like chunks here and there and a very light colored tint in some areas, but it's not uniform. So I don't get it. I thought that these were wax pastels. I still think that that's what these are, but if I'm wrong, let me know. But I think that I'm not going to keep these because I don't see what I'm going to be able to create with these. I got this that has been given to me as well. It's a paper pad. It says prepared for pen, ink and charcoal for students and professionals. So what I want to know is, is this acid free paper? 
If not, I don't mind, but I need to know because if I want to create something, it's a nice size and they're in good shape. So I could create some stuff with it. I just want to know if it's acid free or not. It says it's a hundred sheet, but it looks like maybe there's a bit less than that. The brand is Aqua B. I have never heard of this brand before. So I'm going to do a quick research, see if I can find the answer, but you're welcome to give me your input for sure. Okay, so I found some information. So the brand is not Aqua B. The brand is B Paper. And Aqua B signifies that this paper can take a light amount of wet media. On the website, it says that the vast majority of their papers are acid free. Of their artist papers are acid free. But it doesn't say anything more than that. And this is for students and professionals. So do you think it's going to be acid free or not? I don't know. It looks quite old. On their website, there's no sketchbooks that look like this. So I'm assuming that they changed the packaging or like the front page. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure like where to find the infos for this one. The paper doesn't look like it's yellowed. So I guess that could mean it's acid free paper, but I'm not sure. I don't know if you, if you know, please tell me. I got some charcoal pencils. I got some charcoal pencils from the brand Derwent and Royal Sovereign. And this is a Conte and Sanguine drawing pencil. Whew. It's a uh, charcoal too. I just got some shivers because I touched it. Ugh, the texture. Okay, so I think these are the brands that I got. These ones, I'm pretty sure the brands are good. Well, I know that Derwent is a good brand. And these other ones, they feel like they're good. Like when I touch them, they feel like they're good quality. I can't say for sure. Of course, I don't know. And I got China markers. What are they? I don't know. So I need to do some research. There's a couple of brands. There is from Dixon, Canada. There is, I think this one is Blaisdell. Canada, I think. Uh, this one is USA Barrel China Marker. So these are all brands that I have never heard of. I don't know what a China Marker is. I guess I could do some research and find out. So there's that. And also I got these high temp marker and overhead projection markers. I don't know what they are, but I tested them and they're water soluble. So they feel like an in between, between a colored pencil and like a neo color too. You know, just by touching them, you get like a residue on your fingers. So they're a bit messy. I don't know what these are. So if you know more about these materials, please share all of these infos with me. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. I did like a second of research about China markers and I found some stuff. So I thought it's not your responsibility to educate me, although it is very nice when you do, but I thought I would share with you. It says that China markers are also called grease or wax pencils, are writing implements made out of hardened colored wax, fade and moisture resistant. These specialized dry markers are ideal for writing on non-porous surfaces such as glass, metal, polished stone, photographs, and ceramics. Interesting. What I also did in the past few weeks is that I went away for a couple of days with my family. So we did some ski, we did some snowshoeing, we ate a lot. And I brought all my art materials there. I wanted to paint or draw something because I knew that the landscapes would be so pretty and so inspiring. But I think I have to learn that when I'm with people, it's hard for me to take the time away and to step aside to paint or draw because people always want to do something as is understandable. I still took a bunch of pictures there. So what I would like to do is take one of these pictures and paint or draw a winter landscape. I think that would be fun. 
And if we still have time, I would like to also paint a travel painting. We'll see. I will paint this picture. I think the challenge with this picture is going to be the values. So what I decided is that I would paint a monochromatic painting. So I'll use only one color and I really try to focus on values. I will use something that's been a while since I used it, which is this. This is a watercolor, a liquid watercolor from the brand Dr. PH Martens. It's going to be so nice. And what I like about this is that this is not a color that you would expect from a winter landscape. So the challenge is going to be able to represent snow, but with this. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if it works. Yeah. Wish me luck. Before we start, I was supposed to go to my dance class. And so I look at this makeup. I did some super cute wings, did my eyebrows and put a, a little bit of color, put some earrings on, got dressed which is something. And then I got there and the place was closed. Anyway, so now I'm very cute, but I have nowhere to go. So might as well paint. It's very cold still. You know, it's spring break, but it's very cold outside. It's not spring at all. Let's get cozy and uh, let's start drawing. So I started by drawing a sketch using my colored pencil. I chose red because red is the color that I'm going to use throughout this image. So I did not want to have a sketch that would be a different color because it wouldn't make any sense. So that's what I did. And I decided that I would also use a sketch as a means to create some texture. At this point, I wasn't sure if we would see the texture or not after the paint layers, but it was fun to do and it was also a way to map out where the values would stand. And after that, I just did a couple of layers of paint and I had so much fun. Okay, so I thought that I could talk to you about some of the books that I've read this year. I know that this is not booktube. I am not pretending of being a booktuber, not at all. I have no training in literature or anything like that. So I don't have a vocabulary, I don't think, to give you like a good review. I can just tell you about some of the books that I read, some of the books that I really enjoyed and some of the books that I did not enjoy. Because so far this year, there's been a lot of books that I've read that I did not enjoy or that I would not recommend. Which sucks because last year was a really good reading year. But so far, I would say 50% of the books I've read, I would not recommend. So, so far this year, I read 23 books. I know, we're just in March. My goal was to read 40 books for the whole year. But I think I'm going to read way more than that. But we'll see. I managed to read a lot without allocating any time really in my day for reading. I read when I'm in the public transport. I read during my breaks at work and I also listen to audiobooks so I find myself reading a lot. One book that I really liked was Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez, which is a story about a black nurse in Alabama in the 1970s. And it's her journey as a black nurse trying to make a difference in her community. She works in family planning but she works with a lot of poor families and a lot of young girls. He talks about racism, sexism, all very important subjects that are still relevant to this day. So this one was really good. Then I read Our Missing Hearts by Celeste N.G. I don't know how to pronounce her name, which is such a good book. It was very popular last year, I think. It's a book about, it's like a dystopian world after some kind of revolution in this book everything is super controlled everything that is not american is punished if you stray away from the traditional american values 
if you're taught to stray away from it, you might just disappear. So it talks a lot about motherhood and racism. It's really good. I really like this painting. I think that it's pretty clear that it's a winter scene, even though I used a color that we do not associate with winter usually, which is this bright red. So I'm very happy about that. I knew it could be a challenge. I didn't know if it would be a challenge, but I knew it had the potential to be like an extra, an extra challenge, but it turns out it, it wasn't really. I think that the key was to focus on values and that's it. Then the rest just worked all by itself. So I'm very happy about it. I like the rectangular shape that I gave it. It looks a bit like a movie scene. So yeah, we did our winter scene. I think now I would like to take a travel picture from Curaçao and paint it. I don't know in which sketchbook I'm going to paint it yet, but we're first going to select the picture and then we'll go from there. I really feel like painting boats. I took a bunch of pictures with boats in them. I have some with this huge cruise boat that looked like so much fun. So, but I'm trying to find a picture. Like all of them would be nice to paint. So I really have to choose. Choice is difficult. I also have pictures with smaller boats, which I think maybe that's what we'll go for for now. I think I'm gonna mix two pictures together. So I have this landscape of the ocean. So I'm going to use this picture for the landscape, the general landscape. Maybe I'll put one or two swimmers, who knows. But I have some pictures of boats that I will try to incorporate in my final image. I like this one. I like the angle of this one too, so we'll see. For this painting, my goal was to be very loose. So that's why I did not even use my ruler to create the horizon line. Usually that's what I would do, but this time I did not. I decided that if the horizon was crooked, then it would be fine. And I just put splashes of paint everywhere. So you'll see, I really like the result. Let's go back on our book subject, if you don't mind. Please let me know if you want me to stop talking about it in the future, but I don't know, I find it very interesting. Another good book was KKI from Vaishnavi Patel. It's so good. It's like a bit of a fantasy. It takes place in India. It follows this young girl in the times of kingdoms. So she's a young princess and she gets married into another kingdom. And it's her journey as she grows up, as she becomes more influential. Throughout the book, you see her defying gender norms at this time. She gets involved in battles. Women issues are one of her main concerns. So it follows her and the challenges she faces throughout her life. There's also an element of magic in there, of fantasy. It's so good. And you get to learn a lot about all of these Indian gods and goddesses. It's super interesting. It's so good. What else did I read? Oh, another book that I really liked was Four Treasures of the Sky by Jenny Tinghui Zhang. It's a story about a Chinese girl in the years, a couple of decades ago. It's a young girl, she got kidnapped in China and sent over to America to work in a brothel. And then she runs away and then she has to disguise herself as a young guy. And there's a lot of anti-Chinese sentiment, a lot of racism too, and it's her story, her resilience. So it's a story about how she survives in this world. And there's a bit of Chinese history, Chinese folklore and all that. So it's very interesting, very good. I could end by just naming a few books that I've read that I would not recommend. And if you want me to elaborate on that, I can in another video, but now I think I have to stop talking. So the first one is A Visit from the Goon Squad from Jennifer Egan. Don't read it. 
it's not worth it. <laughs> Another one was, oh my God, Leave the World Behind from Ruman Alam. What a stupid book. I'm so sorry, Ruman Alam. I don't want to say that you're not a good writer. This is nothing on you. It's just I really didn't like this book. The premise was promising. There was so much potential in this book, but it's just that they didn't do anything with the potential. Anyway, don't read it. <laughs> what else? Oh, I read The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende, which I know is a classic, but I found it to be so long slow pace and usually i don't mind a slow pace book but this book was a big one nothing happened in this book i just towards the end i just read it so fast because i wanted to be done with it oh and the latest one that i read i finished today it's trust by hernan diaz it's another book that was super popular last year so i was really looking forward to reading it and man, was it disappointing. I found that I couldn't care about the story at all. Like all throughout the book, I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about the subject. I didn't care about the story. And then at the end, there's supposed to be like some elements of surprise that are not really so surprising. So it was just like, I didn't care about this one. So yeah, these are the books that I liked and the ones that I disliked so far. I read a lot more. But uh, these are my most notable ones. Okay, I'm done. I think this is so cute. Look at this little guy doing some snorkeling. And then I have some boats here. And then there's this um, pelican in that boat. So cute. Little tiny boats. And I love all the details here. The little houses, the stairs here. I love them. It was so much fun to do. Yeah, I love it. And I wrote Piscato Beach here, which is where I took all the pictures that I combined to create this painting. And I like how I was able to create the shadows of the boat and this little guy here. I think it's, it looks like, I don't know, it looks quite realistic. I'm very happy about it. I think that's gonna be it for this vlog. I know that not a lot of stuff has happened in this vlog and I hope that you don't mind this chiller, more low paced vlog. I feel like that's what I needed and that's what I did. So yeah, that's it. I had so much fun painting these little paintings. I think both of them are so different. They both were a good exercise for me, but in a different way. So the red one was more an exercise in values and technique. And the other one was more an exercise in letting go, trying to loosen up, not overdoing things. It's another step towards my goal of doing more abstract landscapes. So we're getting there slowly but surely. I'm very happy about this one. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up, a like, a comment, as usual. And I will see you, I hope, next week. Okay, take care. See you soon.